Kenesha Dees, and welcome back to Fox 54 Week in Review, your weekend capsule of local headlines and stories that impact you here in North Alabama. Here's what's coming your way over the next half hour in change. Tuesday was a washout, but your Rocket City Trash Pandas got their home opener off to a grand start on Wednesday. So how'd they do? The highlights just ahead. And your taxes are due Monday. If those words have got you panicking, take a deep breath. Stick around for tips from the experts to make it as painless a filing deadline as possible. And the arsenal is no stranger to big bangs, but those bangs you may have heard this past week are part of a larger public safety strategy session. We'll take you inside this training session with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. We'll start with a story that affected just about everyone in the country, Monday's total solar eclipse. While our view was hampered in part by rainy conditions, it was still an event to remember. Let's get the week in review started. Well, if you haven't heard, this Monday is expected to be pretty historic with a total solar eclipse turning day into night for many across the U.S. Another total solar eclipse like this isn't expected again until 2044. Our Jasmine Bird shares more. We are hosting a party. We're expecting 500 people to come. For some, like Rachel Van Weinsberg, the solar eclipse is a big deal. School is canceled. Work's let it out. We are ready to get together and look and stand around in the dark. This also isn't quite the first rodeo for the Ohioan. We watched the one in 2017, we, but we didn't have eyewear. We just got our welding helmets out of the barn so we could look at it through there. But this year, she says, will be different. The whole community is, and everyone has their glasses. They're warning us to have food and water and gas and to be extra prepared. Professor of Optometry and Vision Science at the University of Waterloo, Ralph Chu, shares that wearing solar eclipse glasses to protect your eyes when looking at the sun is key. If you look at the sun unprotected, then, um, you know, if you stare at the sun with a sustained fixation for more than uh, uh, a few seconds, then it is possible for that very bright sun to create an injury at the back of the eye. But that's not all. It's also important to be aware of fake solar eclipse glasses that look real, but... They don't transmit uh, or they don't block enough light. They're transmitting more light than they should. And reviewing the labeling of the product is the number one way to identify the real from the fake. The inside surface of this particular solar eclipse glass has all sorts of text on it because... Uh, the standard requires six different things to uh, be included in the labeling of the product. The U.S. Space and Rocket Center will also celebrate the solar eclipse with a day full of activities Monday. Well, happy solar eclipse day. I'm Kenesha Dees. The U.S. Space and Rocket Center used today's eclipse to educate the community about these types of events. Arkin McCoy with the story on how they had some fun, too. Here every day at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, we make it an educational experience. Experiencing a solar eclipse can be an educational experience. Just ask Museum Education Director Joseph Vick. Having an astronomical event like the solar eclipse gives us the opportunity to showcase to them these astronomical scientific pieces that NASA in conjunction with NASA were showcasing were that having that really fun day experience because if you're coming to a museum you want it to be an experience that is remembered a family learning environment the u.s space and rocket center hosted a day full of educational activities geared toward helping children and parents understand the science behind the eclipse not only will have the live feed we have going on right now a marshall space flight center heliophysicist talking about solar eclipse science and safety we also have the alabama space grant consortium students from Alabama A&M University and UAH showcasing some hands-on pieces on what is a solar eclipse and the science behind it. We have some family and young children learning in the space we're in right now, our Spark Lab, talking about lights and shadows. And we have our Maker Monday 
for our middle and high school teen programming uh, where we're looking at teen art, our pixelated art, and how you can look at uh, graphics taken from outer space. Vic also shares why the center enjoys hosting these events. So it is events like this that we love and we cherish to do for our community and it's events like this that leave a lasting lifetime of education for sparking the children and the future of tomorrow. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. If you imagine a big very, dark very circle, cool. Just well, Decatur students and... made the trip out to Cape Girardeau in Missouri to get a front row seat to the excitement. The district held a special live stream session on Facebook where students talked about what they've learned and about the eclipse and got the experience, the whole thing. Here's one portion of their stream just as the eclipse was reaching peak totality. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen at home, do you remember that during the total eclipse, the four minutes when we're in total darkness, they may, you may see with or without glasses, we can look up. I did just momentarily. Wow. Pretty cool. Well, kids back home weren't left in the dark, so to speak. Leon Sheffield Magnet School got to spend the day on the steam engine, learning about the eclipse and the Earth's rotation and the phases of the moon. <laughs> The Athens community breaking ground for a project that's been in the works for about two years. It's the Alabama Veterans New Military Park. A groundbreaking ceremony for the park was held, excuse me, was held by the museum this morning. And this new project is phase three of the museum. Organizers say the park will pay homage to honoring the men and women who have died for the fight for freedom. Uh, this park is gonna have a suspended helicopter about 20 feet up in the air. You're going to see flagpoles, you're going to see uh, sidewalks, you're going to be about, you're going to see about seven monuments uh, that uh, honor the uh, men and women of, of the different wars and different conflicts that America has been involved in. It's just going to be a sacred uh, ground. When it gets done, everybody will enjoy it. It'll be a sight that we can behold. All right, the new military park is about a half a million dollar project and it's expected to be completed in about five months. You're probably used to getting notifications from emergency services on your phone or mobile device, anything from weather warnings to Amber Alerts. But have you or a friend gotten an arrest warrant on your phone? Madison County officials say people are starting to report that they have and they want to put a stop to it. So let's verify. We've brushed up on our current laws with the help of the Alabama Rules of Criminal Procedure, and we have a statement from the person who warned Fox 54 about the messages in the first place, Deborah Kaiser, clerk for the 23rd Circuit Court in Madison County. Deborah says fake arrest warrants or orders of arrest are being sent to mobile devices via text message. She sent along a sample of the fake warrant for us to review. One way to tell it's a fake, text in this area here is cut off, as if it were cut out of one document and pasted onto this one. And here, the FDIC logo? That's the organization that oversees banks. Nothing at all to do with warrants. It's believed that logo is put on the fake document to make you think you need to pay the sender money to cancel the warrant. But the rules of criminal procedure in Alabama state quite clearly that warrants command an officer to make an arrest and bring you before a judge in person. So we can quickly put the kibosh on this and say no. Arrest warrants sent to you via text messages are a scam. Do not pay any amount demanded of you in the message. Also, Kaiser says it's important you report the scam message immediately to the authorities. In Madison County, the number to call is 256-532-3390. With your verify. I'm Chase McPherson. We're learning new details about the city of Decatur's proposed repossession ordinance. A newly added section to the ordinance states that repossessors should consider that the risk of a breach of peace may increase during the early morning hours. Due to this, they are encouraged to act accordingly for the safety of all involved, especially in residential areas. The ordinance goes into more detail about what constitutes a breach of peace. Now, the Alabama Supreme Court defines peaceful repossession as in part, quote, without risk of injury to the secured party, the debtor or any innocent bystander. 
And the court goes on to state in part, quote, the potential for breaches of the public peace and tranquility as a result of unauthorized intrusions on property escalates in direct proportion to the presence of fences, gates, signs, and other non-assent to entry, entry rather, end quote. Well, the new version of Decatur Repossession Ordinance could be voted on and approved at next week's city council meeting. If approved, the ordinance would take effect on June 1st uh, at tonight's Decatur City ordinance. Council work session. The ordinance was a heavy topic of conversation. Decatur City Attorney Herman Marks discussed the legal repercussions for repossessors if the peace was breached. Well, one community member then raised questions surrounding Decatur's all-star towing and recovery, who was present the night of Steve Perkins' death. She believed they breached the peace and have not yet faced any consequences. Take a listen. We're the current Decatur City Tow Truck Ordinance, North Alabama Code 79A609, which explicitly states that the statute does not authorize law enforcement to assist in repossession without judicial process. But their part in the death of Stephen Clay Perkins, All-Star Recovery Company decision and actions have left our city torn apart and hearts troubled. They have breached more than the peace of the city and the state. The company and personnel that acted on that night of September 29, 2023 has left a family without a husband, father, son, brother, family member, and friend. All right, well, tonight's work session also saw Council Member Hunter Pepper announcing his decision to leave during public comment. Similar to Mayor Tap Bowling's stance, Pepper believes the sessions are not proactive and he added that they are in part, quote, irrelevant to city business. We reached out to Pepper's fellow city council members for comment and are waiting to hear back. Pepper gave us a statement on the matter. He said in quote, public comment is relevant if it's productive. It's irrelevant if it's not productive. It's the same people with the same statements every week. I'm tired of it. They are hurting our city and have no clue what they are doing. So they are disrespectful and having disgusting attitudes and carry themselves horribly. They yell that others need to grow when I feel that the growth they speak on needs to come from them before casting a stone onto another, end quote. We've seen the progression of the movement in the fight for justice for Steve Perkins grow from marches outside of City Hall to calls for reform for what they say is a broken system. Tonight, a meeting was held at the Turner Surlis Communities Resource Center to discuss ways to see changes within their community. Standing and Power members spoke on some of the changes they want to see. Um, I feel that the biggest hurdle will be the fact that the city council as well as the mayor has done nothing since September 29th and they have been ineffective overall. Um, so my biggest fear is that they will continue to do what they have been doing and that's nothing. They look to continue to keep having these meetings and also keep their presence felt in both the community and at city council meetings. <laughs> April 15th is the IRS tax filing deadline, and I know you may be procrastinating getting your tax documents in, but it's really important that in an effort to get it all done in time, you don't make simple mistakes. It can be as simple as an incorrect social security number, maybe one digit off, or an incorrect filing status, or a wrong account number. Those are things we have to look out when we're rushing to get our tax return done. If you're feeling that rush to get things done, you may overlook red flags from so-called tax preparers. Avoid preparers that base their fee on a percentage of your refund. They may even promise you a larger refund than other preparers in the area, or they fail to sign your return. Make sure that tax preparer has a preparer tax identification number, that he signs your return, whether it's electronically or by paper. We recommend taxpayers file electronically because that's the fastest, the easiest, and the safest way to file a tax return. Accidentally working with these scammers can put you in dangerous situations. These tax preparers can steal your personal information, starting with your social security number to your bank account and those uh, social security numbers of your loved ones. And at the end of the day, it falls back on you. Taxpayers are ultimately responsible for the accuracy of all information put on the return. They could be held liable to pay the interest and the penalties and the taxes they're due and owing back to the IRS. Although tax scams happen all year round, they tend to increase during tax filing season. There's a lot of threatening scams out there right now, like you need to call the IRS. They're going to arrest you through the emails and text. Don't respond to that because that's a scam. The IRS will never contact you using social media or text message. 
The first contact from the IRS usually comes in the mail. And if you're a victim of a scam, the IRS wants to know. If you are aware of an unscrupulous tax return preparer or you feel like your preparer has been um, unscrupulous, call the IRS or you can use the uh, Form 3949, the information referral, to report that information to the IRS. Sedona Meadows, Fox 54 News. All right, well, it was a busy day blowing things up on Redstone Arsenal. Yes, you heard that right, but don't worry. It was controlled and all for a reason. It's to provide explosive training and research to ATF agents as well as postal inspectors. Our Sedona Meadows takes us there. It was an explosive day with ATF here on Redstone Arsenal. The good kind of explosive. The kind that helps state and local law enforcement, as well as other federal agencies, learn how to investigate these types of crimes. This week, specifically, we've partnered with the United States Postal Inspection Service, so their postal inspectors make up half of the class. These postal inspectors are a part of the law enforcement arm of the Postal Service, working to combat mail theft and violent crimes. Crimes like package explosions, where both ATF and the Postal Inspection Service have jurisdiction to investigate that crime. So we've got an old mail van where this particular device was getting getting taken somewhere. We've got a vehicle that's pulled up to a mailbox and the device was placed in the mailbox. And then we've got a third car over here where someone had already picked up a package and they were on the way home and it blew up. These agents, this is the actual pipe, are able to get a look at the post blast scene. They look at all this evidence and they try to figure out how that device was put together and how it was designed and that sometimes helps you figure out who the intended victim was. Now this is just part of the week-long hands-on explosives training. The agents are also shown how these kinds of devices are made. Looking at components and pieces and parts of everyday common items that can be used for explosive devices. And the reason for bringing in all these different entities. We want them to be what we would call a force multiplier. Law enforcement who take this training will be able to know how to handle these kinds of investigations and who to call for backup. We actually routinely get phone calls from the field from people who have come through the class and we're able to put some of our guys that are really the experts in this, uh, put them to, to work. So yeah, the good kind of explosive in Huntsville, Sedona Meadows, Fox 54 News. Well, the Athens community held a celebration of what organizers like to call Black Excellence earlier today with a free community event called the Ubora Fest, providing music, dance, theater, soul food, and more. Our Jasmine Bird takes us there to learn more about it. The Athens community is celebrating African American culture with an Ubora Fest, which in Swahili means quality or excellence. Let's take a look. We want to uh, put black excellence on display. So you'll have jazz music, you'll have R&B. DIPA President Jerome Malone says this event originally started with an idea for Black History Month. And so the idea was, I think a lot of times what you have is several organizations doing small things. So we wanted to come together and do something big, put our resources together and do something big that the city can just really appreciate. With the fest offering everything from music to soul food, theater and more, that wasn't the only black excellence on display. A few vendors also had a part to play. Education begins at home. Yes. A parent is their child's first teacher. After educators Jesse and Dr. Alfred Brinkley retired from the Decatur City School System, the couple decided that they wanted to continue working with students. So therefore, they decided to write books. We, want, we wanted our students to always be able to empower themselves from within. And that's what our books are based on. And for Jamal Myhan with JLD Publishing, Myhan shares that there's really only one way to describe African American culture. Our uh, skills, our uh, you know, the, the, our experience. And um, so when we bring all of those things to the table, 
you know, we're, we're, we're a complete package. Now, event organizers say this Ubora Fest may be the first in Athens, but the plan is that it won't be the last. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. Now, Fox 54 Top Teacher, sponsored by Calhoun Community College. We meet a teacher who's traveled the world and her passion for teaching landed her right here in Huntsville. Her hope is that her students don't allow circumstances to limit their dreams. Here's this week's top teacher from New Century Technology High School, Emily Heller. Meet 11th grade teacher. Reading has been a huge part of my life. Emily Heller. I was always that student who loved reading and loved writing. That was always my passion, even when I was a student. This is Heller's fifth year at New Century Technology High School teaching AP language, composition, and English. If you're like me and you have not taken trig or haven't taken it yet, are you gonna- But on this day, Heller switched it up a little by preparing students for the ACT, teaching math. Heller's taught high school students for 12 years overall. I got into teaching um, because I really wanted to be the adult that I needed in my own life when I was a student. But in between that time, she's made stops, teaching from New Orleans to Slovakia. I actually did a program called Teach for America, which at the time would send people kind of wherever. Um, and when I got the news that I'd be going to Alabama, a place I'd never been, I was excited, but a little bit unsure of what I would find and it turns out what I found was a home for the last 10 years. And her principal, Heather White, can tell that this school is home for her. I will say Ms. Heller has such a strong connection to our students. She is a go-to teacher. Her love for them and helping them succeed, her passion for making sure that students can get to college is unmatched. Heller hopes her exposure to the world will inspire her students. I think it's been a really cool aspect as a teacher to be able to share with my students that no matter where you come from, what your background is, how you grew up, that there are opportunities that if you're attuned to, like you can really take advantage of and let those things take you to travel the world, which has been something really cool for me as a student who grew up low income. And I love being able to share that with my students of being able to pay attention to the world around them and see those opportunities and put their name in the hat. Well, congratulations, Heller's executive director of the Cap and Gown Project for high school students. $600 million are going into preparing Huntsville City Schools for future growth. And tonight, parents in the Huntsville High School Zone gathered to discuss the feeder plan for their schools and the 2024 capital plan. Arkin McCoy has the story. This is a $600 million investment. Huntsville City Schools unveiled their 10-year capital plan. We think this plan is going to help us accomplish our goals as we reach unitary status with this consent order. And of course, the main factor in everything we do is student success. Tuesday, a meeting was held to discuss the Huntsville feeder plan portion of the proposed plan. We got great schools. Goldsmith Chipman is a great school. Huntsville High School rated 17th by U.S. News and World Report in the state of Alabama. This is a great feeder pattern. I just want to briefly touch on our amazing school, Blossomwood. We want to commend our teachers and admin for helping all of our students thrive. But one of the biggest concerns brought up was a concern for parents about the continued growth in the Cove area. So as it stands now, we need a new elementary school right now in the Cove. If we need a new elementary right now in the Cove, then we're going to need a new middle school. We've got to put something in that 10-year plan and not wait to the end of it to make something happen because the population is going like crazy. While the need for the school is valid, the process is not as simple as it may seem. When we're looking at a facilities plan and considering a responsible use of taxpayer funds and a responsible way to address our existing facilities before we look at a growth or expansion, is if we have capacity, how would we justify going and spending $80 million on a high school when we have two high schools that that feeder pattern does and could feed into without having those schools at capacity. So that I just want to provide context so that we all understand what the board, what the district, what the judge and the DOJ are considering when we're looking at this before we just say, we want a high school, so let's go build it. But there was some positive feedback concerning the potential of sixth graders going to middle school. I just am very excited about sixth grade going back to the middle school. Um, our table talked about you know, just the limited opportunities for sixth graders when they're part of an elementary school. So I was, that for me, that was one of the big highlights of the plan. For Fox 54 News, I'm Kim McCoy. 
Scottsboro community. The Scottsboro community is coming together to help one little girl raise money for her late mother's tombstone. This is Emery, and since her mom's passing, Emery has been setting up a lemonade stand outside her home to help raise money for her mom. And the community has all come out to support her. Since Geared Jammer's local restaurant post about the stand online, Emery has had no shortage of visitors. Emery's grandmother is sharing on Facebook, thanking the community for their generosity and support, adding that thanks to them, Emery's mother's funeral is paid for and the headstone is being donated. After Coach Margaret Richards stepped down from her position on the Hill, Dr. Paul Bryant promised that a new women's coach would be in place before the Final Four. And guess what? He kept his word. Today there was a room full of Bulldog alums and some orders who were there to meet Dawn Thornton, the new Lady Bulldogs head basketball coach. Thornton is no stranger to the swag. She played for Jackson State in the mid-2000s and spent the past five seasons as the head coach at Arkansas Pine Bluff. This season, her Lady Lions finished swag play with a 12-7 record, and they eliminated Alabama A&M from the swag tourney this season and last. Coach Thornton is a proven winner, and now she is excited about bringing her winning ways to the hill. A&M has the most resources, the best facilities, um, the best administration um, that we have really to offer in this conference. Um, you know, this is this is this is a territory that I love to be able to try to stretch my hand in to get in the community. Um, everything is right here. The resor the resources you can just tell by the day. Everybody's just showing up excited to, to wanting to do something different for this women's basketball program. So I'm looking forward to meeting people, getting out in the community community and really embracing what it has to offer. And we got it down to one and who really helped were the student athletes and them being a part of that whole process from beginning to end was very, very, very good for us and I think it, we chose the best candidate. Eric Richards did not stay out of a job long. Today, the former Alabama A&M women's head basketball coach was hired as an assistant coach at Mercer University. The move reunites Richards with her former boss, Michelle Clark Hurd. The two worked together at Kentucky State and Western Kentucky. A few weeks ago, Coach Richards stepped down from her position with the Lady Bulldogs following an eight-year stint. She won 97 games during that stretch and coached up numerous all-swag standouts, including Doriana Lewis, who was a multi-time HBCU Player of the Year. Baseball was finally played at Toyota Field this evening as Mother Nature didn't get in the way of the umpires yelling, play ball this evening. The Trash Pandas taking on the Birmingham Barons this evening. The Pandas trailing 2 to nothing through the fifth when Daylit Calabresi finds a gap in the shallow left field. Sam Brown will come around the score. Then Eric Wagaman is waved home. The throw is off the mark and we've got a tie ball game at two apiece. Now Pandas up 2 to nothing. Excuse me. Um, after that, We've got another Pandas run uh, coming through right here as Calabresi will come around to score and it's now three to two. Let's go to the sixth inning now. Tucker Flint line drive in the right field. Cole Fontenelle will come around to score. Trash Pandas up four to two at that break. They win their home opener this evening by a final of eight to two. Just like Alabama men's basketball, Fox 54 Sports traveled to the Final Four for the first time in our history. We went to the desert to see the Tide take on the Yukon Huskies. Be sure to check out all of our content, pictures, videos, and stories, and exclusive interviews on fox54.com. All right, well, congratulations are in order for our Fox, 50, oh, excuse me, Fox 54's own Sedona Meadows, who won an Abbey Award from the Alabama Broadcasters Association. She accepted her award at a banquet accompanied by a friend and Fox 54 alumna Nixon Norman. Sedona won for, excuse me, won for best f news feature for her story called Love on the Diamond about a Toyota Field employee who got Sprocket, the trash panda mascot, to help in a surprise wedding proposal to a co-worker. Everyone at the station is so thrilled to see Sedona get this prestigious honor. Congratulations, yes, Sedona. She Absolutely. is one of the most deserving people she really is. that I know. She works extremely hard, so her coming home with an Abby was no surprise, honestly. And her sprocket stories are always tied yes, here. She and this was probably creative. the best one she did. She is very creative. I remember when that story aired, and I just thought that that was the cutest thing ever. I'm always going to remember that for forever because that's just a one in a life, lifetime chance, you know? All right, definitely. Sprocket? Is. I mean, come on. 
But yes, Sedona is so deserving and we are so lucky to have her here at Fox 54. And I was glad that I got to see Nixon too. I'm saying, yeah, it's good to see Nixon yeah. one last time. <laughs> And again, a congratulations to our Sedona Meadows well-deserved award. That wraps up our weekend review. Don't forget this and other exclusive content all week long on Fox 54 Plus, your free streaming app available on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Check out our mobile app for breaking news, weather, and sports anytime, anywhere you go. For all of us at Fox 54, have a great week ahead.